So if, like, let's say you have a hexane molecule with a double bond to an O, what would the degree of unsaturation be? You mean like this? Yeah. Um, how many pi bonds are there? Two. I mean one, but... Um, and how many rings? One, but let's say, let's say you were just going to figure it out by the formula. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, so first of all, you would get two degrees of unsaturation. So we can see that's right here because... So uh, let's see. Six. How many carbons are there? Six. six. Um, and uh, how many hydrogens? Ten. Two times one, two, three, four, five. Ten hydrogens, is that right? So this would be... And don't you have to subtract the oxygen? No. Notice that oxygen does not appear in this formula. X is for halogens. X is for halogens. Okay. Yeah, oxygens do not affect the formula. So this would be 12 plus 2 is 14 minus 10 over 2, 4 over 2, 2. And that's the number that we're supposed to predict here. Okay. That's right. Okay, so yeah, this, uh, this is a very reliable formula. It always works. Okay. okay. Uh, and again, that would be a big head start if you're trying to decipher the structure of this compound. Uh, although here, of course, you can't tell here whether this means two pi bonds and no rings, or one pi bond and one ring, or two rings. So it's only a clue. It's only a clue. Oh, so. Um, are pi bonds or rings further to the left? Well, we've already learned that um, carbon, carbon, alkene hydrogens are further to the left, right? We've already learned that alkene hydrogens are further to the left. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I briefly mentioned that an aldehyde hydrogen would be in this region, 10 to 12, over here. What about this hydrogen over here that is next to the carbonyl? Um, well, that would be pulled uh, to the left. I don't actually remember how far to the left it's pulled um, by this double bond. You'd have to look that up, basically. Okay. So pretty much double bonds are further to the left anyway. Uh, actually, I don't know if it's, it's not really the double bond here that's pulling it to the left so much as the oxygen, I think. Okay. I'm not quite sure what the effect of this pi bond is. So the only one they have memorized is, again, carbon-carbon pi bonds um, are in this re uh, the hydrogens on carbon carbon pi bonds are in this region. Uh, a lot of the thing, uh, a lot of the uh, effects again you have to look up in the table. Let's do another example, try to figure out the structure here. Do we know the peaks? Oh, okay. Here's our peaks. So these are here to the right of uh, about 1.25. Here we have an integration of 9 and here 1. Oftentimes in, in, um, when integration data is reported, it's reported with an H because it stands for the number of hydrogens. So here we have 1H and 9H. So again, we have to do a little puzzle here and try to figure out the structure. We don't have too much more time, so we'll just go through that together. Um, so hopefully you started by figuring out the degrees of unsaturation. We should always start by figuring out the degrees of unsaturation here. Well, 2 plus the number of 2 times the number of carbons is 4. There's no nitrogens or halogens to subtract, and there's 10 hydrogens. 
So this would be 0 over 2. So there's 0 unsaturation, no rings and no pi bonds. No rings and no pi bonds. No rings and no pi bonds. All right, now the key thing is um, we don't really want to just start by guessing a whole structure. Instead, you want to try to put the pieces together. You want to ask, what does this represent and what does this represent? Now, first of all, we know this is really one hydrogen and this is really nine, not say two and 18, because we know the number of hydrogens over here. Um, so let's call this the A and the B. So first of all, we know that A looks like this. So let's just start by writing down that fragment. We know that this peak must represent this. It represents a single hydrogen on a carbon, and we haven't figured out what these bonds are yet over here. Okay, and then what about this over here? Well, how can we possibly have nine hydrogens all in the same peak? By having three methyls. Three methyls. You should watch out for multiples of three in the integration. If you see a multiple of three in the integration, there's an excellent chance that that's a bunch of methyls. If you see 6H, there's a good chance that's two methyls. Or if you see 9H, there's a good chance that's three methyls. Um, not, not a sure thing, but that's an excellent guess. So there's a very good chance here. As a guess, we would guess that the B peaks represent these fragments. And now, this is like a jigsaw puzzle, now you see if you can put these fragments together to come up with the whole molecule. Uh, well, I don't think it's too hard to see now that we can put each of these methyls at each of these bonds over here that we didn't know. So now we can put these things together. And that would give us this guess for the structure. And then we should check whether that makes sense um, here's our A and here's our B. Notice that A is uh, a little bit more uh, downfield than B over here. Well, that makes sense because A is a more substituted carbon. We know that the more substituted carbon should be a little further to the left than the less substituted. So as a double check, that confirmed that we got our structure right here. Okay, um, this is just a very simple example of the type of puzzle doing that you have to do to solve these types of spectroscopy problems. And we're just getting started with very easy problems here. But again, notice most people's instinct would be to start just guessing four carbon structures. Your instinct might be to guess four carbon structures. Um, that might work here because this is so simple. But um, if there were, say, five or six carbons and some halogens in here, there's an infinite number of structures. And it would take you forever to try all of them by trial and error. Instead, try to figure out the fragments that correspond to the peaks. The puzzle doing approach here is try to figure out the fragments that correspond to the peaks and then try to put the fragments together in a reasonable way. Um, that's the kind of technique that we have here. So that takes practice in order to do that. All right, and always try to start with the degrees of unsaturation.